Hello, it's been a while. But as a mega fan who just left the theater, I felt I had no choice but to shut off Idolmaster and come out of hiatus to bring you a quick, spoiler-free review of Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. <laughs> What is there to say about this movie? Well, to give you an immediate idea of how I feel, I don't look down on Paul W.S. Anderson as much as I did a few hours ago. That's not to say I entirely hated this adaption, because I didn't. There are actually some redeeming qualities to it. But those qualities are quickly overshadowed by the bizarre choices that went into making this film. The story takes the plots of the first two Resident Evil games and mashes them together into a single film where the events happen simultaneously. As you can imagine, the 107 minute runtime isn't quite enough to fully capture the necessary elements from those respective stories and paint a clear picture. It also didn't allow us to spend any meaningful time in the mansion, the police station, or Raccoon City proper. As a fan of the video game series, it hurt to watch as huge chunks of story were simply not present or rewritten entirely to fit the new narrative. If the clunky plot left me confused, I can't imagine what the average moviegoer with no ties or prior knowledge of the series must have been feeling. Seeing as they opted to mash the stories together, they had no choice but to include several characters from both Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2. Seeing this in the trailers had me worried that fleshing out such a large cast in a single movie likely wasn't going to happen and it didn't. Go to this film expecting your favorite characters to be characters in name only. Each one has had a caricaturized version of their real personalities implanted into an actor. The acting itself was either nothing to write home about or dangerously cheesy. It was impossible to tell if that was by design as homage to the old video games or not, but either way, it wasn't quite landing. Visually, the film wasn't bad. I found myself actually enjoying some of the cinematography, especially in the Arclay Forest and Spencer Mansion. However, there was some really jarring editing happening throughout that would sometimes ruin a scene for me. It's like the movie was having an identity crisis and couldn't decide if it wanted to lean into the style of classic horror films or a modern sci-fi channel flick. Both the practical and CGI effects would shine brilliantly in some scenes and turn around to fall flat in others. I must say, overall, the zombies did not feel very Resident Evil to me, if that makes sense. There were tons of little nods and easter eggs throughout the feature that were fun to look for as a fan and probably easy to miss if you aren't. That said, it got to be a little much in some of the scenes. I won't go into specifics, but goddamn, subtlety is key. I think one of the most important things I was looking for is whether the movie was scary or not. I mean, Resident Evil is what kickstarted my horror obsession as a child. It has, in some way, shaped the course of my life. It's what led to you being able to watch this video right now. And I hate to say it, but this movie just wasn't scary. Like, at all. I understand that I'm being pretty critical, but what did you expect? It's a disjointed film that tries to cram too much into too little and almost completely fails to capture the spirit of its source material. In all fairness, that's pretty hard for any video game adaption to accomplish. All I really wanted was a coherent Resident Evil film that surpassed the previous attempts, and I'm not sure I can say that it did. But hey, at least there's no fucking Alice. <laughs>